Good afternoon. Uh, hopefully everything continues to work with uh, these slides. Um, so uh, I'm just here to talk with you quickly about how you can improve your uh, Django application monitoring with an open source project I wrote. Uh, it's called Django Watchman. Uh, just a quick bit about who I am. My name is Michael Workington. Uh, I'm an operations engineer at Wave. Um, there's our URL. Go check it out. We do uh, invoicing, accounting, payroll, things like that for small businesses. So what is Django Watchman? Um, before I dive into that, let's take a quick look at how an application might end up needing to get some monitoring implemented. Um, so you've built an app, you put it online, people start using it hopefully, people are happy, your boss is happy, your boss might even use it, who knows. Um, but at some point something goes wrong, the application goes down, uh, and hopefully you are able to find out about this relatively quickly, uh, but it doesn't always happen. Uh, so at this point is where someone might say, hey, we should use something like Pingdom to monitor our application. Uh, for anyone who doesn't know, Pingdom just takes a URL uh, and sends a request to it every minute. And if something goes wrong, if there's an error, uh, it will send you an alert. Uh, so a lot of people just point Pingdom at their homepage or the root of their application and kind of call it a day. Um, but if you do that, do you really know that all of the backing services that your app requires to function are actually running correctly themselves? And is the application configured correctly for those uh, backing services? Uh, so that's where Watchman comes in. Um, instead of just sending Pingdom to your homepage, uh, you can send it to your Watchman endpoint instead. And Watchman knows how to check all of those backing services, like your caches, your databases, uh, can I send email, things like that. Uh, so just a little bit about who's using it right now. Um, we're using it at Wave. Uh, we have about 12 or 13 applications, I think, with it configured. Uh, and we have multiple monitoring services that are hitting those endpoints. Uh, our hosting uh, provider, VM Farms, uh, they also use Django Watchman, and they've been recommending it to their customers as well who use Django. Uh, and I did a search and actually came across an open source project uh, from New York City Parks Department. Uh, which was using it, so that was kind of neat, neat to see. Uh, and of course, I'd love it if, if some of you thought that this is something that would be useful for you and decided to use it as well. So how do you use Django Watchman? Uh, it's pretty simple, it's a pluggable Django application, so like many of the others you've seen, you need to pip install, uh, so just pip install Django Watchman, and then in your settings.py, you need to add it to your installed apps. Uh, and then you just need to configure the URL. Uh, so just at Watchman, you include watchman.urls. And at that point, you're, you're ready to get started. Um, so once you've, once you've done that and you've restarted your dev server or pushed it to your production servers, uh, you just hit the URL, whatever your server name is, slash Watchman, and you'll get back a JSON response. So what you see here is kind of the, uh, the various checks that it's run. It's checking your databases, your caches, uh, your file storage, can I read and write files? Um, and in this case, everything's, everything's functioning correctly, so you just get back, okay, true. What would you get if something was actually not configured correctly or wasn't working? This is what you'd see, so you get a, again, it's checking your databases, your default database, something's wrong with it. So you get back, okay, false, along with an error, kind of explaining what happened. Um, access denied for user, as well as a full traceback of kind of what happened. There are a few other things you can do. So if you're only interested in a subset of the checks from a certain endpoint, uh, you can restrict what you wanted to check. So here you can see I'm just saying check equals watchman.checks.databases, and it's ignoring the caches and all the rest of it, just returning the database response. Um, now if you're, I mean, we're all people here, we're not computers, right? So parsing a blob of JSON when you hit an endpoint in your browser is not exactly a great way to be able to tell if something's going wrong. So we also provide a dashboard. You just hit watchman slash dashboard. And when you do that, you get uh, you know, a, a much easier visual parsing of what's happening with your server and your systems. Um, so this is from one of our applications where we have 
30 plus databases. You really don't want to look at a JSON blob for that many databases. Uh, so this just gives you a really easy way to kind of see what's going on. Uh, you also get a management command out of the box. So you do python manage.py watchman, um, and it will run the same checks that the request endpoint would, would do as well. Um, it follows the Linux conventions, so if everything's okay, you get a return code of zero. If uh, something's gone wrong, you get a return code of one. So you could do something like when you deploy your application, before putting your server back into the load balancer, you could actually run the management command and decide if you want to actually throw it back in the load balancer at that point. So what do you get built in with, with Django Watchman? The nice thing about Django is it has a lot of this configuration already, right? It knows where your caches are, where your databases are, how to send email, how to write files. Um, so Django Watchman just uses this. You don't need to configure anything extra to check the things that Django already knows about. Uh, so that's, that's pretty cool. But if that's not enough, you have other pieces of infrastructure that you need to know about. You can write your own custom checks as well. Um, so all that really is, is a, it's a simple function. Doesn't take any arguments. Should return a dict. Um, and you should actually, it's kind of weird, but you should catch and return exceptions rather than letting them kind of bubble all the way up. So here's a, a quick example of a custom check we have to check our RabbitMQ connection. Uh, so you can see the whole thing is kind of wrapped in a try accept block so that you can return the expected dict at the end. Um, but all we're really doing is setting up the parameters to, uh, that we need to connect to our RabbitMQ server. We're opening that connection and closing it. If something goes wrong, we ca catch that exception and, and return the dict. Uh, so you don't really want to expose this to the public, right? If you're exposing tracebacks from your from your system, there could be credentials exposed and things like that. So uh, we do give you ways to authenticate uh, who, the people who are hitting your endpoint. Um, the first way is to use just a simple token-based authentication. Uh, so it's built in, uh, easy to use and set up, and the best part is probably that it works with those tools like Pingdom. They don't have user sessions or anything like that, so you need something that you can kind of pass along with the request. Uh, so all you need to do to set that up is set your watchman token setting in settings.py and then you need to pass the token that you set up in your settings along with, uh, with the request that's coming in. If that's not what you need, you can uh, write your own custom authentication or you can use an authentication decorator that's already out there. Um, so an example of this is Django comes with uh, built in some built in authentication decorators that you can use. So if you want to restrict this endpoint to staff members only, Django already knows who those people are. All you need to do is kind of point Watchman to use that decorator. Um, and again, if you want to write your own, this is kind of a silly example, but I only want the first user on my system to be able to actually access this endpoint. So it's just a standard decorator. Uh, and Within that, I'm just checking who's the ID of the user on this request. Is it number one? OK, they can view it. If not, they get a response forbidden. So a couple of caveats with this system. It's not perfect. Um, the first thing is that you can't catch exceptions which are thrown in the middleware on your Django site. Um, it's just the way Django works. Uh, so if there is an exception in the middleware, you're just going to get your standard Django error page back. Um, in practice, this hasn't been an issue for us. Uh, Pingdom or whatever you're using will alert you if it gets back an error from Django or from Watchman itself. So it hasn't turned out to be a problem. We're going to find out about the issue one way or the other. Uh, the other thing to watch out for is if you have a third party backing service. So an example of this would be using Mandrill to send email, uh, which we do. Um, if you have multiple checks and you have multiple endpoint or multiple services hitting those checks and you're sending an email every time it happens, you know, you could be sending thousands of emails a day, which could actually add up to some money. So by default, that one's actually disabled, um, but it's something to watch out for. 
You can also hit timeouts and things like that. So VM Farms, our hosting provider, doesn't really care if you know, we can't send email. That's not really anything they can help with. So they disable that check on there specifically. So that's about it. Just a quick introduction to this uh, open source project I wrote. Um, I'll be around for the sprints tomorrow. I think Wave is the sponsor for them. Um, so if you feel like you know, contributing something to this or even just getting some help um, setting up Django Watchman for your own Django application, I'm happy to help you out and uh, get you going with it. So thank you.